Chris Dick here. Uh, we're going to move into part seven of my uh, MS SQL uh, Server Management Studio series, uh, managing a database in uh, SSMS. Um, for this tutorial, we're going to start talking about uh, many-to-many -many relationships. So far, we have set up uh, one-to-many. So, in other words, we have one student to many addresses, uh, emails things like that so we can have sort of an uh, unlimited amount of emails and un unlimited amount of uh, addresses at this point. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up um, courses and uh, with courses comes a few other relationships. Uh, number one is that um, we set up a table for courses but uh, that course uh, can relate to many students. So we have to set up an in-betweener table uh, that links a student to a course ID. Okay, so if the first thing we're going to do is get started with, <clears throat> with uh, building a course table. So we're going to, and I'll just maximize this, give us a little more space. And we use my uh, code snippet that I created again. Uh, it is right here. I'm going to use it to create a table. All right. So we have uh, a table. I'm going to call it courses. Okay. All this looks good. This is our primary key. Uh, we have a create date, edit date. We are now going to uh, set up so that we can add in couple other features. We have uh, course code. Okay, some of the natural things that you would you would normally see in uh, in uh, if you were creating a course, for example. Okay, uh, it is a an n bar char, which means it's a string. Uh, it cannot be null. All right, um, and that would be it. Okay, we're not going to provide a default. <clears throat> but essentially it cannot be no. Let's just say that. Yeah, well, you know what? Let's just do it at default. Why not? I kind of like to wing things sometimes. So let's do this. Uh, we'll create a course code pattern. XXX-XXX. All right. So if by chance a course goes in without a course code, at least it'll show XXXXXX. And if it doesn't, uh, you know, if, if we had to query on those courses, uh, that's an easy one to find. Okay, we have a course name. Okay, also an n bar char, and we'll give this a little bit longer, um, longer string. So let's call this. Let's say it's uh, 26 characters. Why not? And it has to be, has to have a name. Okay. This one, I'm not so concerned about whether it's got actually got um, a value per se, but uh, I, I kind of I don't like nulls so much, so I'm just going to give it a blank string. Okay. Now um, the other thing that we are going to also have here is we're going to have the a location table that is related to our course table. So I'm going to create a location ID, which means that we are going to have um, <coughs> a uh, we're we're going to have um, another table for locations. So let's say you know course uh, course code ABC is in room uh, A three twenty one, right? Um, so in our locations table, there would be a, a three twenty one, all right. And our default is going to be one in this case. So right now we don't know what one is, but uh, we'll fill in some details uh, later on, okay. And I think that's pretty good here so far. Um, you know, we may think of some other ideas down the road, but uh, naturally this is uh, what we want to do um, and I'm also I'm going to create our our locations table in the same query here just so that we can get it all done in one shot when we do this okay so we have locations okay all this information is set up as usual 
Okay, uh, name, <clears throat> we'll just call it name. It can be something, whatever you choose. Um, but uh, generally, this would be like a room number or something like that in case of... Um, uh, in case of a school, for example, right? And let's just have it a default as room, right? Uh, location doesn't really have to have anything more at this point. Again, you could, you may, you may have, uh, you know, in one school you could have several thousand rooms. Um, so you could go deeper and create, um, you know, a campus and things like that. So, uh, we're not going to get into that detail right now. We're just assuming that we're working with one, um, one location. Okay. Now, um, we're also going to create a, uh, a relationship between these two tables. Okay. Again, once again, I'm going to use my snippet. Uh, we're going to add a foreign key, okay, so it's going from courses, all right, uh, to locations, all right, uh, and the key here is location ID, okay, that's related to this column and this column, okay, and from the locations table, we're looking at um, the location ID right here. Okay, and this column here relates to this column. Okay, so if all goes well, um, we're going to have a locations table and we have a courses table. We'll also alter the courses table and add a foreign key. So let's run that. Okay, it looks like everything's completed successfully. Now to display those tables over here, we have to refresh and <clears throat> If I uh, remember from another lesson, we updated our IntelliSense as well, so that it also included that. So we have to refresh, refresh local cache. Okay. All right. We'll close that. Now, the next um, next part that we have to set up here, and oh, by the way, what we should do is we'll just sh I'll show you the relationships here. So if I go to View Dependencies. I can look at uh, objects that depend on courses and objects that courses depends on. And what you see in depends on, you'll see locations here. That's the relationship, the foreign key that we set up. Okay. So cancel that. Now, what we have to do is create a, uh, a relationship between our students and our courses. So I am going to call this table student courses. Um, once again, I'm going to use my snippet. I really like this little tool. I would definitely suggest you try setting up your own snippets. Uh, student, students, courses, because it's many to many. Okay, just remember that. <clears throat> and uh, all this information is correct here. Now, this kind of table is designed to be very small. Um, you don't necessarily need these things, but I, as I mentioned before, I like to have an audit trail for certain things. It's a, it's a simple audit trail where we'll say uh, it, th this relationship was created on this date, and if someone edited it, it, uh, it, would, it was edited. The last time it was edited was, would be recorded here. Okay. So we need to record a student ID because uh, that is the relationship that we're picking up. It is not null. In other words, every line that I enter here must have a student ID. And then we also have a, a course ID. Okay. And the course ID uh, relates to this. Okay. Naturally, that means we have two foreign keys that we're going to create in this, uh, in this table. Um, so I'll uh, pull up two foreign key entries here. Actually, I'll just do that one over again because I lost my nice little tab over form fields here. So it's this is going, uh, we're going to do the one from students, courses, all right, to uh, students. So this would be our students link. Okay, so students ID and student ID. OK, 
Okay, we're going to do one more here, and this is going to be for the courses. So it goes from uh, student students. Okay, courses. Make sure I spelled that right. Uh, to courses, and we're going to look at course ID and course ID. Excellent. Okay, so if I create this uh, table, if I run this, it's going to create uh, my table right here. Uh, create a relationship between students table and a relationship between courses table. So if I run that, everything looks like it's done what it's supposed to. I'll refresh. And if we update our IntelliSense, uh, we do shift control or control shift R. That's one way to do that. Okay. So we close that up, and now if we look at our dependencies again, we have uh, objects that it depends on. It doesn't depend on anything, but but um, or that depend on that. It doesn't depend on anything. And then we have this nice little table here that says uh, students courses depends on courses and students, and courses depends on locations. Okay, excellent. Now we haven't got any data in in our tables uh, yet. All right. So um, if I go in here and uh, and do a quick look up here, I've got a couple things there. Uh, I think this was from our couple lessons ago. Yeah. Okay. So because we've got this many-to-many -many relationship and we've just created these tables, we've literally, we're starting from scratch here. So let's, uh, let's just add in a row. I'm going to use the editor this time. And uh, just because it's fast, we're just going to throw it in here. Now, I'm going to need a location ID. So I can't just simply edit the, the, course, uh, the course entry here. I need a location. And because we don't have a location, we have to create one. So I'm going to create this uh, one, and, and uh, with the example I used earlier, we'll do A321, okay? And remember, create an edit date. We don't have to edit anything here. So uh, let's just execute that XQL. Oops. Funny enough, it didn't work, but uh, let's just do it again here. All right. And execute. There we have it. Now we've got one. Okay, we have location one is uh, A321. Okay, now if you recall, my, my default for location is A321 now, because I said that my default is, uh, or for that is in courses, I've gave it a default of, uh, of one. Okay, and that was this entry right here. Now, if, uh, if I have it as a default uh, A321, that may not be the best choice, okay? So what I'm going to suggest here is this. I'm going to suggest that it is online, okay? That would be like all my default, all my courses in this, in this case. If I, if I just simply specify the uh, one, it's always going to be online, okay? Um, and then let's do that A321 here. We'll put in two entries, okay? We'll execute that. And now we have two. Okay. So if we close this up and we go into our courses, we'll have a course code. Um, let's call it uh, data1001. Okay. Course name is data programming. All right. Location ID. This is our A321. Okay. That's number two, by the way. So you, at this point, you'll have to remember these things, but as we start developing our application around this, we'll be able to see that two relates to uh, something else. Okay, it'll be, it, we'll be able to relate it and we don't have to remember the number, we'll have a name to look at. Okay, now what we have here is uh, we've got our many to many relationship. So I have a course ID of one, okay? I'm going to grab any old student right now. I don't uh, don't know any of the student names off the top of my head. So I've got a student ID of one that looks like me. 
So I will, I'm going to script this one this time. I'm going to do an insert into, okay? And again, it's good to have have this knowledge too. Like you know, you don't always want to be stuck with always having to use a uh, you know a, a designer to do this. You you want to get used to using some script because you're not always going to have nice tools to work with. So we have a student ID of one, okay. A course ID of one. If you recall back here, we have one as our course ID. We're not going to worry about the create dates because they will be done automatically when we run this. So we can delete these fields. Okay. There we go. One row affected. If I list that, let's just uh, write over this. Select star from students courses. I run that. Push up five, and you'll see it's been added there. Okay, so that is it for our many-to-many -many relationships um, tutorial. Uh, remember to like and share, and in our next tutorial, we're going to uh, start talking about views and, uh, you know, and how we can get more information out of our database. Thanks a lot, guys, and uh, join me soon.